Hello and welcome to Back to the Science. I'm Dr. Susan Oliver and I'm a scientist and I'm also a ski bunny. And in this video, I'm going to be talking about something that is both relevant to being a scientist and relevant to being a ski bunny because we're going to be talking about the slippery slope fallacy. Now, the slippery slope fallacy occurs when people can't make an argument against something, so instead they make an argument against some imagined catastrophic thing that they claim is going to happen in the future with no evidence that it will in fact occur in the future. And the reason they call it the slippery slope fallacy is it's believed that once you're on a slippery slope, you have no choice but to keep accelerating faster and faster until you crash and burn at the bottom. But that's not actually the case. I'm standing on a slippery slope right now. And as you can see, I'm completely stationary. And if I wanted to, I could stay here stationary all day. But I don't want to. I want to ski to the bottom. So that's what I'm going to do now. And I'll see you later for the rest of the video. I decided to finish the rest of the video indoors because my hands were going numb trying to hold the phone and also I think the sound quality is probably slightly better here because I was out in the wind recording on my phone with skiers whizzing by, which is not a great way to get good sound quality. However, if you stick around to the end, you'll get to see a bit more of the lovely Australian ski fields. Anyway, as you can see, I made it down the slippery slope unscathed as well as a lot of other slippery slopes and that is the case for most slippery slope arguments. What people are suggesting is going to occur actually isn't going to occur at all. Now slippery slope arguments are particularly popular with politicians. For instance, at the end of 2017, gay marriage was made legal in Australia and it was done so after the whole country voted on it and decided it was what we wanted. But people who were against it, instead of arguing against gay marriage, were arguing that if we legalise gay marriage, next thing you know, we would be legalising marriage to children and to animals, etc., etc. Needless to say, neither of those things have occurred. But slippery slope arguments aren't just made by politicians. Sometimes they are also made when people are arguing against science or arguing against public health measures. And one such person doing that is Dr. Vinay Prasad. And by the way, just as an aside, Dr. Prasad has actually blocked me on Twitter even though I've never had an interaction with him and up until now, I have never mentioned him in a video. Weird, hey? Dr. Prasad wrote an article on Substack as well as a YouTube video entitled How Democracy Ends. And in that article and the video, he suggests that COVID-19 policy shows a potential, in brackets, path to the end of America. In this article, Dr. Prasad suggests a number of steps that could happen which would lead to the end of democracy. This paragraph here is an example of some of the many hypothetical things Dr. Prasad suggests could occur. A future US president may declare that the crisis in the region from influenza is unprecedented. Too many children are dying and hospitals are near capacity. Citing the lessons of COVID-19 that if anything we acted too late, the president may call upon the governor to issue a shelter-in-place warning. A week later, citing a continued rise in case and non-compliance of the local people, the president could order the National Guard or army troops in to secure the region. Notably, military force was applied in Australia during COVID-19. Now, it's not quite true to say military force was applied in Australia. The military certainly were involved in the COVID effort and they did help the police, but the members of the military who were involved in the exercise were unarmed and under the direction of the police at all times. So there was military involvement, but not military force. 
And the military also helps out in other national disasters like when we have bushfires and floods, again, without any force being applied. Regardless, Dr. Prasad's article, as well as the YouTube video he's made on the same subject, goes on to suggest a number of further hypothetical things that could happen as a result of this that eventually will culminate in our final step, which is the end of democracy in America. And then finally, the elections. The elections may near, and the future leader may say, you know what, the Constitution prohibits me from moving the date of the presidential election, but it doesn't specify how the electors are chosen. And I'm going to ask the governors to make an exemption and change the way we picked electors and not do a direct popular vote this year. It's too risky. And in fact, we're just going to have to go with electors that are handpicked. They're going to pick me. So Dr. Prasad doesn't like public health measures, but he knows that arguing against measures that will substantially reduce unnecessary suffering and death is difficult because most people aren't assholes. So instead, he invents a series of steps that could lead to something that most Americans would be against the end of democracy in America. But of course, he provides no evidence that any of these steps will occur. And for a slippery slope argument to be valid, every single hypothetical step down the slippery slope must occur. Now, let's say there are five steps needed to get to Armageddon and the end of democracy in America. And let's say there's a 50% chance of each step happening after the one before. That means there's only a 3% chance of the slippery slope outcome happening. If, in fact, there was only a 20% chance of each step happening, that would mean the chance of the final outcome is now only 0.03%. Of course, it's not this simplistic. Every event is not going to have the same chance of happening. Some events could have a slightly higher chance of occurring. Some events could have a slightly lower chance. And often there will be more than five steps involved in the whole slippery slope. What is clear, though, is that a slippery slope argument is very unlikely to occur because you only need one step in the slippery slope to have no chance of occurring for the slippery slope to be terminated and the imagined hypothetical event not to occur. And it's worth mentioning that a slippery slope argument can also be used the other way around to falsely justify something slightly unpalatable by suggesting that it will eventually lead to something fantastic. Parents are sometimes guilty of this in their efforts to convince their children to do their homework. So if you see anyone succumbing to the slippery slope fallacy, either on YouTube or Twitter or Facebook or anywhere else, please share this video with them. And if you've made made it this far, thank you for listening. And if you've liked or commented on the video, Double thank you because that means the YouTube algorithm will share it with more people. And of course, thank you to everyone who has bought me a coffee. I really appreciate it. I will be making more videos about logical fallacies in the future. So if you'd like to see them, please hit the subscribe button. Thank you.